All right. Cool. Well, uh, happy to be here. First time. <laughs> yeah. Good All to have right. you. Uh, thank you. All right. Well, the first question I have for you is, um, so we just got the reveal of Imeldo Kreis, uh, Mandalorian, and Grogu in both the Vintage Collection and ba uh, Black Series. Uh, and recently, we've seen figures like Bib Fortuna uh, and Figure and Dan uh, pipeline for both scales around the same time. Uh, we welcome this balance of the scales approach uh, and would love to see more of it going forward. Uh, can you talk a little bit about this approach? Are the Vintage Collection and Black Series teams able to share their development work across the scales? So. Short answer, yes, we're able to share back and forth. We do all the time. I mean, it, it's critical in these things with as much detail and color and, and specking as we do and development work as we do to share and talk constantly about that. And Emily and Eric, who who deal with TVC and Black Series principally, they, uh, they're they con in constant communication on stuff. So in scenarios like this with the the all the little spiders and stuff in those two sets, I mean, that one was a perfect example of doing both of those at the same time, really let us lean into having the array of spider sizes. Um, so we, we try and play a little bit that way and, and be able to make offerings that, that work and work with each other that way. But that being said, it, sometimes the priorities for TVC and filling a, a character void that we've had or for Black Series, the same thing, there, it doesn't always make sense to do like the same figures, the balance, the scales yeah. thing, like you said, it doesn't always make sense for that to happen. So it, sure. it's about what's the what's the priority and what's the most important thing for each of those lines. Yeah. So, and for those fans. Okay, cool. And, and I should just say, Chris is the manager for our, uh, on the design side for our whole fan line. So sometimes the sharing of things is him talking to himself. So, uh, so that <laughs> definitely is happening. <laughs> Well, thank you. Oh, absolutely. Thank you. All righty. Um, up next, Chris from Bantha Skull. Morning, Chris. Morning. Uh, so the Vintage Collection Mandalorian and Grogu Maldo Crease set appears to be a new expression for the Vintage Collection, foregoing the 6 by 9 card. Can you tell us uh, the dimensions of the card, whether or not they will be numbered, and can we expect more uh, uh, offerings in this expression? I... I don't know the dimensions of the card off the top of my head. Um, Patrick, is do you know, is it the same? It's the same height as our standard TVC cards. I think it I might be so, slightly yeah. wider. Um, but more in, in that sort of thing, I think that's a safe bet. Okay. And, and numbering, will they be numbered? Uh, where are we on numbers with those, Patrick? I don't think we're numbering them, are we? Uh, we can look into it and get back to you on both the dimensions and the numbering, Chris. Appreciate um, it. But yeah, yeah, I mean, Chris is right. Like whether it looks exactly like this or different, kind of we're, we're, we're just like with Black Series across all the lines, we're, we're looking to explore those characters and offerings that are too large to fit in mainline. And this was one way to do it. Uh, we could potentially explore different ways in the future. Great, thank you. Absolutely. All righty. Up next, Matt from the Black Series Instagram. Hi guys, thanks again for doing this. Um, last round table we did when we were talking about the Cantina set, there was talk that there's no plans to release a second Cantina or an alternative set for that, and you'd have to buy two Cantina sets to make the full bar. Mm -hmm. um, just with the PulseCon weekend, I had a number of people within the community come and say that uh, the Cantina was limited to one per uh, person. So with that in mind, is there any new plans or anything to revisit or have a new iteration of the Cantina set or with or without figures? Yeah, I think we'll, we'll tag, tag team this one. Um, basically, the short answer for the first part is that uh, we had this uh, question in a different uh, set of interviews, but the world changed, obviously, in the past two years from when we kicked off that item to when it was delivered. Uh, the original plan was for people to be able to buy multiples, obviously, since that's how it was designed. Um, given the quantities, given the state of the world that we had right now, we wanted to do our best to ensure that everyone who want one got it one. That's kind of where we put the priority. We are, we're potentially exploring additional quantities uh, next year because we know that that demand is still out there. We can't make any guarantees, but it's something we know that fans want and we're looking into. Uh, and then, uh, Chris, if you want to uh, yeah, answer and the second part. In, in that regard, too, I mean, looking at ways to 
to use those cantina pieces in the future. And we just need a way to use them that makes sense. And we're, it's not just going to be like the random cantina play sets not going to show up. But if there's if there's a way we can use that and make make that available in a different way, I like that's always on the table. Maybe with the bartender. Always, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Thanks. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Alrighty. Up next, uh, Jake from 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 Four Lambdazuckus. I know it's always a rough one. Uh, good morning. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I, I think we're all pretty excited about the Mandalorian and Grogu Maldo crest set because we've all been starting with that. Um, so yeah, we love the world building of it. Uh, we're curious on what the thought process was in releasing that deluxe version on an oversized card versus going like a windowless box that they had uh, with Kmart exclusives back in the previous iteration of the line, like the Ewoks and the Imperial Scanning Crew. The box route also seems like it would be another step toward Hasbro's uh, plastic-free packaging pledge from a couple years ago. Um, and so uh, we're curious on that. And then also if this is an Walmart-only exclusive expression. Got it. Uh, so a few different questions in there. I'll take them in reverse order. Uh, this expression is, def this particular item is exclusive to Walmart. The expression is definitely not limited to any one retailer. It. Um, it, it's an interesting point about the windowless box. Uh, definitely something that we could explore, just kind of like what we said with the previous question. Um, for this particular item, just knowing kind of the heritage and the equity of the card backs, we wanted to keep it within that style. But you know, as there's potential for future items like this, if it evolves, it might make sense to do a different expression for it, uh, a windowless box, like you said. Perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. All righty. Uh, Stephen from Fly Guy. Morning, Stephen. Hi, you guys. Thanks again for doing this. Um, the question is about the Mortar Trooper that came out recently, uh, sold out so quickly, a really popular army builder. And I guess it's, it's both a question and maybe a recommendation from our, our viewers uh, is that when it comes down to army builders, uh, can we just not do exclusives on army builders because they sell so quick? So the problem I think a lot of collectors are facing is it's sold out in seven minutes or so. Um, and it just becomes really, really hard. It's sitting at somewhere like $80 at the moment on Amazon. Uh, and they're just, you know, we're really kind of, it's just everybody's a bit kind of bummed because the bots and the scalpers get in there and they just buy it and flip it. Um, so I guess it's a bit of a kind of, please can we maybe find another way or, or really ideally kind of windows where we can have a three month window and then it's available to fan channels or something i don't know yeah. whatever you can do yeah i know all, all good questions and good suggestions uh try to again keep track of them all you guys do a good job of packing a lot of the uh, question um but basically it's you know we hear also from fans that doing kind of main characters uh, as exclusives is challenging so I, I can say without kind of this Amazon exclusive slot, we wouldn't have this figure in the line. So we're certainly grateful for that. Um, the kind of, you know, month window is something that we've talked about and we're exploring. There are some challenges, but it's, it's you know, a great idea. We're definitely aware of it. And it, it's something we would love to be able to implement. Um, in terms of this particular item, you know, I've said in the past, we always strive to find the right balance between supply and demand. And our perfect world, you know, honestly, is one where every fan who wants one get one get sure. one, you know, we're continually striving for that. You know, the team is aware of the demand for this item and we're exploring whether we're able to kind of offer additional quantities of it. Given the state of the world, that's challenging. Uh, and sure. if we did, it wouldn't be until next year, but just know we're aware that fans want more of this and we're trying to make that happen. Awesome, thank you. <clears throat> Absolutely, thank you. Uh, Tim from Boss Bounty. Uh, good morning, afternoon, everybody. Right. Thanks for having me again. Um, so my question again is about the uh, Mando build-up pack uh, for the Vintage Collection. And um, it was just really pleasing to see that it had been updated with the rocker ankles. So you've made an already amazing figure e even better, basically. Um, so my question really is just about sort of future releases that are pipeline. For example, the 332nd uh, Clone Trooper. Is there any chance that could be updated with rocker ankles before it's released? Because I'm this is a presumption on my part that you're probably going to use the 501st VC45 sculpt for, for that figure. Well, we're, we're always looking to update those things. I mean, Emily is a, is a passionate TVC fan herself mm. and, and knows the need and desire for all those, those add-ons. So 
we're we're constantly looking at ways to bring those to new releases. So I I don't have specifics to tell you on those figures, but uh, right. but it's it's definitely a priority for us to to increase that sort of feature add. So okay, thank you. Cool. All righty, back to the top. Uh, I think we're going back to Evan. Right. Um, well, it's great to see so many vintage collection items coming from new and recent media like The Mandalorian Seasons 1 and 2 uh, and The Clone Wars Season 7. Uh, however, these items are joining the line uh, roughly a year and a half to a couple years after the entertainment first airs or is released. Uh, and these will be hitting shelves as fans are enjoying one of the five new seasons of uh, Star Wars TV uh, coming in 2022 alone. Uh, leaving the line in kind of a constant state of catch-up. We know it can take about 18 months or two years to get figures to shelf. Uh, so does this mean you guys are gauging fan reaction to new properties before deciding to make product to support them? Uh, or is the popularity of recent media, TVC in general, uh, and the onslaught of uh, shows that are about to hit us in the next few years, does that give you more confidence to get new media figures uh, figures into TVC earlier? Yeah, it, absolutely. We're, you know, we work closely with Lucasfilm and we're always trying to strike the balance of, we know in the perfect world, getting product right as the show or movie is airing is ideal. Uh, that being said, you know, we've said that the entertain, uh, the movies and TV shows is also important, right? So we've said in the past for episode seven, we saw Luke at the end of that movie, the same time you guys did. We've said in the past, obviously with Grogu, the child, you know, being able for fans to to see that you know in that show was so you know emotional and so amazing and certainly wouldn't want that to have not happened. So we we are still getting figures uh, you know in some scales uh, at some point you know with the with the show or shortly after you know I think of uh, you know Bo Katan uh, Black Series we announced last year during Mandalorian. I'm sure there are others. So we certainly strive for that where possible, where it makes more sense for fans' enjoyment of the TV show or movie then we, we make sure that it's a little later, so. Thank you. Absolutely. All righty, up next, back to Chris from Mantha Skull. Thank you. Uh, so with the understanding that the ongoing global shipping crisis can make this question difficult to answer, um, can you tell us approximately when the on-shelf date is for the droids vintage collection figures, the Target exclusive vintage collection figures? Yeah, we actually chatted about these last week. Unfortunately, we just can't say at this point you know, you mentioned kind of the current challenges in the world. I, I just wouldn't want to put a date out there that turns out to not be correct uh, and kind of provide that disappointment. Um, so I, I can confirm they're definitely still coming. Uh, you know, and we're, we're figuring out when and we're trying to get them to fans as soon as possible. Would you say 2021 is out the, uh, out the window on that entirely? Uh, probably, um, okay. but just wouldn't want to commit, but, but probably 2022. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. All righty, back to Matt. Um, just a, another question now about, I guess, the vintage collection sets that are getting released, the dioramas, um, and just if there's any discussion about upscaling those to six inch scale, just, I don't want to say that they're, they're basics, they're not, but they could upscale nicely as shelf displays, be it the Tantive for the Navara canteen that was just revealed or Jabba's Palace kind of thing, um, just for a bit of six inch uh, love in that area. Uh, we've got no plans for that currently. Um, it It is a fun thing to think about though. And I, I think we all agree, like there's, there's a home for those maybe in some form in Black Series, but finding the right way to do that without breaking anybody's pocketbooks too much too is is also a challenge i mean it's not just make it bigger and all the problems are solved like then what are we sacrificing to do that or do we have to give up another a figure to be able to offer that and i don't think anybody's willing to make the trade of a figure to get a backdrop so and it it's i'll say it's it's not something that's off the table it's just something that it's it's part of the priority juggling we have to do yeah okay but we did manage to find a way to offer a black series rancor so who knows <laughs> yeah okay. cool all righty back to jake all right 
At this year's Hasbro Pulse Con, all of the Star Wars items were exempt from Hasbro Pulse Premium member early access. We wanted to inquire why Star Wars seems to be the only uh, to be the often the only product line with this exemption. We know that Disney owns both Marvel and Star Wars, but the former does not have the same issues. Uh, this has left uh, a lot of Star Wars collectors uh, I've spoken to feeling conflicted about signing up for Hasbro Pulse in the future. Has Hasbro considered providing an exclusive or a perk exclusively for Star Wars premium members to make their annual $50 investment equally as valuable as the other product lines? Absolutely. Yeah. No, it's a good question. I appreciate you obviously sharing those frustrations. That's what we said in the past. We, we love these uh, times to chat Star Wars, but also because it's good for us to hear kind of what the community is talking about. Unfortunately, at this time, that's the policy. That's uh, kind of all I'm able to say. You know, we hear you. Uh, again, it's great to get the feedback uh, so that we can kind of take that into consideration. Um, I will say, obviously, we have the we had the 1027 event last week uh, that was premium members only. Some great uh, Black Series items uh, revealed there. So that's certainly one example of ways that we're exploring to kind of deliver that value to fans. Absolutely. All righty. Back to you, Stephen. Uh, you guys uh, made a great figure in the Obi-Wan Kenobi Walgreens uh, six-inch uh, figure some time ago. And it just, it has always stood out uh, in our shows and from our uh, viewers. It's just been an absolute gold standard in terms of, of the paint application on the face. And one of the key features was the kind of mat, uh, matness, if you want, of the, uh, of the figure itself, just beautifully painted. And a lot of figures, even like the new Boba Fett that's coming out, uh, and I understand the complexities paint and it's, I'm sure it is not easy, but um, they can sometimes look a little sweaty, a, li a little bit um, shiny, I guess, in, in that plastic. Just wonder if there's any way you can give us more of that kind of uh, Walgreens um, Obi-Wan standard in the future. It would be appreciated. No, it, it's, it's good for that feedback. Um, there are always, so some of those reveal images are at various stages of figure development. So like, like we say in most of those at the bottom, like like this is preliminary, like final product may vary sort of stuff. So, I mean, those are all the sort of things we look at as we're working on these things, because yeah, we don't want it to be a glossy faced figure and they, they shouldn't all have just finished a marathon. So, yes. <laughs> but exactly. no, I mean, to the other extreme though, we don't want them to look like they're they're opaque and matte finish either. So it, it's a balance and mm. and, and working on those subtleties and consistency across the development cycle of those those figures, it's it's important for us too. So we cool. we do continue to look at that. Okay, thank you. Cool, absolutely. All righty, and back to Tim for the end of round two. Thank you. Okay, so um, are you able to expand on what parts of the Navarro Cantina playset are made of cardboard? I.e., is it just the door? And also, what does it look like from the front side? Is it has it got like a finished look to it, so you can display it from that side, or is it like the Jabba's Palace where it's quite open? I guess um, it's the backside is where you articulate the little tabs and stuff to change the window panel from the the shot out window to the clear window. So you you have to have access to the backside to get those things in the door panel. So right. there's not a, a finished surface back there. Okay. But the idea with it being modular is that some of those surfaces you can turn around and kind of dress out a, a different corner. Right, so, gotcha. But it, it needed to be open to be able to have the reversible windows and that door panel and stuff. And is it just the cardboard pieces? Is it, is it just the door? The, the door and the window behind the bar. Right, the, okay. The window behind the bar is a is a larger piece that you can take out and flip upside down. So there's gotcha. a there's a window that's not shot out, and then there's a window that is shot out. So you can flip them. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was just hard to to tell from the photos whether it's like a piece of plastic that you take out and put another one in. But you, you're that bit's a bit of cardboard as well. So it's like it, a, yeah, it's, it's like a, a drawing, it's is a, it? Yeah, and cardboard right. cardboard is a disservice using that word, but it is. Right. I mean, it's accurate the way it's made. But and I think when when we say cardboard, sometimes like people think softer and flimsier. This stuff, feel like you can take it and hit it. It's more like a like a game board sort of thing. So oh, okay. very heavy weight. So awesome. Thank you. Yeah. 
All righty, we'll kick off round three and I'll say we're, 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 we're gonna try to keep our answers a little shorter so we can make, make it through all five rounds. So Evan, kick off round right. three. I'll, I'll try to speed through this question. Um, <clears throat> as world builders, TVC collectors do really appreciate the recent focus on figures from Clone Wars season seven, uh, allowing us to build out these Mandalore battle scenes with most of the key players uh, as pipeline some more Mandalorians. Uh, this is following on building out recent themes like the Heroes of Endor and filling out the recent TVC play sets. Uh, will we be seeing more themed releases going forward or does the onslaught of new media make that a bit more difficult? <laughs> It's, it's a difficult problem, but it's a fun problem to have, right? Um, yeah. uh, themed themed releases and figures that work together are an important part of that world building experience for QVC. So that is something we do and intend to continue doing. Um, but it's, it is maybe a little more limited when there are so many properties and we're trying to get to everything in there. But I think you'll see that sort of theming across multiple years too, where maybe we can't do six figures at once this year, but maybe we can do a couple next year kind of thing that work with those and continue those kind of little windows and worlds that way. I'll just say, I hope to see a, a client also make the jump to the vintage collection for our Navarro playset. <laughs> Noted. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Back to Chris from Bantha Skull. And Chris, I will just say also, we have a, a real-time update on your first question. Um, the dimensions for that uh, uh, Mando and Grogu Meldo crease item are the width is eight inches and the height is nine inches. Uh, and it does have a VC number. Talk about service. That's pretty good. I know. Hey, <laughs> it's a, we got a great team. Cracker Jack team. Yeah, we were racing. I was just getting texts in the other window too. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, but third question, Chris. Okay, so given that specialty waves are designed for uh, as an opportunity for new and international collectors to get access to core characters, why does Hasbro seem to choose minor variations of Anakin for this platform instead of core versions of Anakin, specifically the 2013 Black Series three and three quarter inch number 03 episode two Anakin, I might add with rocker ankles, it had rocker ankles, which is desperately needed by those type of collectors. Absolutely, yeah. I think I think we might have done a, a, a Darth Vader, not an Anakin Darth Vader, but a Darth Vader in the first specialty waves back in 2019. I may be mistaken, but I think we did. Uh, but yeah, basically, when we build those specialty waves, we look at a lot of different things. We look at some, we have some uh, data from kind of when they were first released in terms of which markets they made it to and kind of what the, the quantities were. We have some consumer research as well we look to. We also obviously keep in mind, you know, without mentioning any details, our future release plans for items in the line. So we kind of bake that all together. And again, you're right, kind of the goal is to get those key characters out uh, to the focuses on international collectors or newer fans. So those are a few of the things that boil up into the decisions. I, I couldn't see, did you wink when you said not to talk about future releases? Was there a wink in there? there there's there's no <laughs> winks. There's never any winks. Uh, <laughs> all right. Um, back to Matt. Um, so guys, Army Builders, the Vintage Collection has a Stormtrooper 4 pack and now a Rebel Trooper Army pack with some stack with diversity. Is this something that's being discussed now with regards to Black Series, similar to how Marvel Legends are providing six inch collectors with uh, builder packs? I, I love how a lot of these questions are. It, I mean, it's good, like, you know, vintage and Black Series, as Chris said, either in this one or a previous one, like we don't deliver exactly the same because we know that the fans want slightly different things. But but I think in general, the fans, it's, it's all great stuff. And so they want it all. So I love we get questions in both directions. Um, it, it's certainly something we've discussed. Um, it could happen in the future. Obviously, for the initial launch, we thought that it made more sense with the, the pattern of uh, collecting for vintage fans. Uh, and again, we do things in Black Series that we don't do for vintage. Uh, but it, again, it's great to hear the feedback from the community. And it's something we could potentially see in the future. Cool. Absolutely. All righty, back to Jake. All right. Given that Star Wars sequels made $4.3 billion at the box office over the last six years, how do you determine what pro properties to release figures from? Is this direction given by Disney or Lucasfilm, or do you gauge interest from fans or collectors? For context, Rogue One and Rebels have about seven to eight Black Series figures in the new Legacy line, but the sequels only have one from a brief dream sequence. 
and sorry, by the legacy line, you mean the, the new black the, series? Yeah, line the book? new black series. Got line. it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so again, do, do you have a name for that line, by the way? What are you guys using? The new line look. The new line. Look. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're we're taking suggestions now. Uh, it, it's definitely a mix of all of those things. You know, we've said in the past, and it's it's true. I I've been amazed over the time I've been on the business how great the partnership is with Lucasfilm, and certainly we work closely. We have several calls a week and meetings to discuss. We also, as we've said, we pay a lot of attention to fan conversations online. Uh, so when when we do see our fans rally around specific characters, series, movies, like whatever it might be, we certainly take that into consideration, do our best to bring those products into the line. I, I will say for the sequel trilogy product, it's because we did so much of that in the previous line look. Um, I mean, I think we've done more characters from episode seven than any other movie. Obviously, episode four, we've done a lot, but any new movie. So, so we went really deep into those sequel trilogy movies with the new line look, we've only brought characters forward where it makes sense, like with those complete the crew programs. And that was where we, we hadn't done all the characters previously. So I think that's a little of what goes into the sequel trilogy. Thank you. Cool. All righty, back to Steven from Fly Guy. Um, look, a, a vintage collection or black seas, it doesn't really matter. Availability, every time I've kind of spoken with you guys and others have said the same thing, it's getting a little better. So it has helped. You guys have really tried to kind of like uh, push a little bit more international availability. So kudos for that. But we have to keep chipping away a little bit in terms of the comms about that stuff. So when, when products are announced, a lot of the world is literally just and a lot of our viewers just sitting kind of John Travolta mean like what's going to happen for us and there's never really any comms about it and it's not the first time even I've done it as well you, you try to buy a product uh, you don't know when it's going to come out and you end up finding months later it comes to a retailer so there's a real gap and a problem of, of communication and I know it's not a, a perfect world but again hopefully if we maybe you're taking it on board maybe you can chip away and improve that uh, when you announce a product, maybe we can announce a little bit more international availability too, please. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a great point. Again, we appreciate the feedback. Uh, we we think we've made a little bit of progress, so it's great to hear that that you guys are seeing that as well, but we understand it's, it's a little bit of progress and there's still a ways to go. We're having conversations about how to improve that and, and hopefully we'll see some of that in the future. Cool, thank you. Absolutely. All righty, and closing out our third round, back to Tim. All right, so uh, to get another army builder pack revealed so soon after the Stormtrooper 4 pack was uh, a lot quicker than many collectors expected, I, I would say. Um, so can we expect to see multiple releases of that expression per year? Uh, you know, maybe you can just give me a bit of insight into yeah. like, you know, the release schedule for that sort of thing. Absolutely. Without yeah. naming specific characters. Yeah, hopefully it <laughs> was can a good surprise. Want. Yeah. Uh, hopefully it was a good surprise. Hopefully fans were excited to see that Rebel Fleet Trooper pack. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think, you know, can't dive into specifics, um, but we did say we have big future plans. Um, and I, I think that would imply more than one. So I think we can say, yeah, we've got, you know, you can expect to see more than one a year. Um, and, you know, what those end up being, we will see. But but we're excited for them. And we're, we're really glad to see that you guys are excited as well. Obviously, that's mm -hmm. why we do this. And so that means a lot to us. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Absolutely, no problem. All right, we're gonna have to go into real speed round uh, territory here. Uh, so back to Evan. All right, well, you said that there's never any winks, but intentional or not, the release of the specialty uh, oh, specialty uh, vintage collection Obi-Wan and Mace Windu figures uh, does coincide with the 20th anniversary of Attack of the Clones. Uh, there are still some other great Attack of the Clones figures, such as the one that uh, Chris from Bantha Skull mentioned, the Anakin from 2013 Black Series. Uh, there's also a Padme there. They look great on TVC cards. Uh, with photoreal updates. And of course, we still need a new Count Dooku. Uh, wouldn't say no to another Republic gunship release either. Uh, we know you're not going to do uh, much probably for that anniversary, but is there hope at least that some more of these items might make their way into the line soonish? <laughs> oh, you're on mute, Chris. Yeah, we don't. I think you're expecting the answer I'm going to give you is that we don't have anything to tell you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, yeah, okay. in the interest of speed, we'll leave it there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will also just say, like we've mentioned, 2022 has a lot of entertainment coming. Uh, and yes. so that's kind of where we're, we're laser focused. Perfect. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Chris, Big Tuna, what do you got? Uh, I'll try to bridge this question for speed. Um, 
<laughs> the Trooper Four Packs we've all been asking about, can they be made available to all fan channels so fans, particularly international fans, have easier access to them? Yeah, no, absolutely. So those items, they, they will be available internationally through Shop Disney on uh, markets that have Shop Disney. And I, I believe that's uh, several markets in the EU. And I have confirmed that we do expect to see those in the EU. Um, you know, just like we do throughout the line, there are fan channel items, but then there are also items that are exclusive to certain retailers. And the plans for these uh, moving forward is for them to remain with Pulse and Shop Disney. Um, again, as with everything, we, we just wouldn't have them in the line if it weren't for that, uh, that opportunity and that partnership. So, but that is the plan moving forward. I'll just, uh, in behalf of our international readers, it seems like Shop Disney doesn't put these out in a timely manner. Uh, I don't think the, the Rebel Trooper 4-pack has even made it to Shop Disney yet. Yeah, and that's, again, I think just given the current state of the world, we're saying that phrase a lot, but just a, a lot of stuff isn't coming out in a timely manner. And we're, 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 we're aware of it and, and trying, to, trying to speed those things up where possible. Thank you. Absolutely. All righty, Matt, back to you. Okay, I'll make it as quick as possible. The HasLab project uh, launched PulseCon came out with just grayscale images whilst Galactus came out with the full model images, teasers of silhouettes of different tiers and GI Joe just came out and put everything out there. All tiers, all reveals. Here we go. How far away are we from more from the Rancor and tiers? Yeah. Uh, I just think momentum will be quicker the more that's revealed and the quicker it's revealed. Uh, to encourage international buyers to go to their channels. Example, the Rancor costs us 800 Australian dollars, uh, where on currency conversion should be $530. Um, so the more tiers that are revealed or the more tiers that are achieved makes it a more backable option for international collectors. Absolutely. Yeah, there's, uh, I, I think we can safely say, you know, relatively soon, you're going to see more news on the Rancor. Uh, obviously, I think last year with the Razor Crest, we revealed with Ray model renders as well. You're going to see a lot more detail uh, in coming weeks about the rank for itself. Uh, and then the tiers, yeah, you know, certainly we, we take a certain approach and, you know, we're, we might see some of those sooner rather than later. We'll see. But uh, we're aware of that and we're excited to keep kind of news coming throughout the campaign to sustain that interest. Cool. Absolutely. Jake, back to you. All right. So there's a lot of, you know, um, questions out there that fans kind of create the answers to. So I thought this next one would be at one that, you know, you guys could set the record straight, for example. Um, there seems to be various beliefs on this subject. So the question is, does having two different scales hurt the production of getting new characters made? Now, I'm not trying to start controversy, but I'm just going to use the example. If you canceled Black Series today, would we be getting more three and three quarter figures from properties like Bad Batch and Mandalorian in the sequel trilogy who have not been made yet in that scale or even pipelined, right? Because people think like, if you do it in one, well, you know, uh, that a Black Series figure takes up the space of a vintage collection and so on and so forth. So thoughts on that? No, it, short answer, no. I mean, there's, it's a, it's a big complex mechanism of how all of the stuff interacts, but Black Series and TVC are their own things. And they each, they each, I'll say they each make their decisions based on their fans and, and the characters that have come before in them. So we look at all that stuff, but we're not, we're not saying put this figure in Black Series and well, we're putting him there so he can't do him here. There's, there's not stuff like that happening. So it's, yeah. it's just making decisions based on the, the individual lines for, for those lines. Yeah, I will, I will say the success of each of them helps drive the other. Like I think about, we didn't have the vintage collection before the relaunch in 2017. We have far more Black Series today than we did in 2017. So um, yeah, it's, if, if anything, it's the opposite that they help drive the other. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Steven, back to you. Um, the Moldo Crease, the, the Snow uh, Mando and Grogu pack, uh, which is fine. It's great that, that it's back coming back out there because it's predominantly a repaint, which is fine. But um, understandably, a lot of fans are getting a little bit picky between TVC and TBS and seeing one has more spiders than the other. Uh, and there's a little bit of a conflict over that. Why couldn't we have more spiders in the other pack given you know one of, one of them is mostly a repaint? 
Um, yes, can you comment on more spiders and uh, why one has got one more than the other? Spider I, love, I love that people want more spiders. That's awesome. They do. Uh, but the, I mean, the Black Series spider is a bigger spider. So <laughs> proportionally. So it's, okay, proportions, yeah. right. Yeah, so it's, I mean, there's some of that, but it's also, I mean, there's the deco and and the offering there is is different. Sure. So it's, okay. they're addressing the same scene in very slightly different ways. So just trying to, to make the most of those offerings in each in each scale. Cool. Cool. And Tim, close out round four. Right, really quick one for you. So uh, in previous Q and A's, you mentioned that the Bad Batch four pack uh, would be unpunched. The cards inside would be unpunched, which I believe they are. Um, will the Death Trooper that's included in the Cantina be unpunched on that card back? And why wasn't the Antok Merrick unpunched? Because that was obviously within a box as well. Absolutely, yeah. So it's we always strive for this. It's not always possible to achieve unpunched cards. Uh, so as with always, you know, we we hesitate to kind of put out absolutes because if it doesn't come true, that leads to disappointment. We don't want to create any unrealistic expectations. We definitely try to do that where possible, you know, without getting into the nitty gritty. When you have a perforated kind of, you know, hole there, just with the process, it's, it's you know, it's challenging to not always ensure that that doesn't get punched out. Um, so again, it's something we're aware of the desire. We strive for it where possible, but we can't make any guarantees. Okay. All righty, final round. Back to you, Evan. Quick one. I won't read the whole long-winded question. Uh, going back to the Maldo Crease pack uh, and TVC in particular, with that kind of line expression of the more deluxe, larger card. Um, with the spiders, uh, does that kind of things like the spiders? Does that kind of open the door for more world building? You know, fun little pack in items in this deluxe kind of uh, style going forward. Now that there's a line expression that can accommodate that. Yeah. Without I, commenting I, on I, specifics. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think that's a safe bet that that sort of approach to things is a, it's a, it's fun. Like we enjoyed it and like the fan response has been good. So I, I think that's encouraging for future. So. Awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. All right, Chris. Uh, since the vintage collection returned in 2018, we haven't seen a single newly tooled PT uh, prequel trilogy figure uh, in the line. If the current specialty wave performs well, uh, would Hasbro consider adding some newly tooled PT figures to the budget? I I think so. It's it's a matter of priorities over all the exciting new content versus looking at doing figures from long ago. So I it, I think we will likely prioritize new content and new exciting characters over characters that we've already done and redoing. But it's it's certainly part of our consideration is to look at figures that that we and fans think need updating. So, yeah. Well, I will say I think some of them are very bankable too. So, yeah, they could do. Cool. Thank Alrighty. You. Absolutely. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Black Series uh, Mando and Grogu Maldo crease pack. Uh, we've got a, a bit of a blue dress, gold dress, whatever it was, <laughs> with regards to the helmet. Um, is it, I know that there's a new leg, um, thigh guard thing, which is new. Is the helmet, the old helmet with deco on it, or is it a new slightly adjusted helmet? The, the deco on it is, it's a dimensional deco. So it, the, it looks like sculpted detail on there. It's, it's dimensional deco. So it's the same helmet? As same the previous helmet. one, I believe it's the exact same helmet. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Jake. All right. Is there a time frame? I'm scratching my head. I can't remember if this was announced. Uh, but the time wave, or is there a wave in which the vintage collection figures will transition over to that thicker card stock that was mentioned previously? Yeah, I think we shared that on our last round of interviews. But we do we expect that to flow in at some point in the spring of 2022. Um, again, kind of in that general period, you know, maybe it'll be a little later, maybe it'll be early summer, but uh, that's kind of the rough timing we expect for that. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. And Stephen? Uh, just uh, George Lucas, Stormtrooper. Has he seen it? Did he see anything? Just yeah. nod, a wink, anything? 
Absolutely. Uh, so we did send the figure to George. I don't know if I can call him George. Uh, Mr. Lucas. Um, and, and I'm sure he's watching this. So hopefully he sees this. But uh, we were obviously that was a fun one to make. Uh, I think Vicky provided some comments. Uh, Vicky, uh, our design senior director, uh, when it was revealed, we were on, thrilled to honor him for the 50th anniversary of Lucasfilm. I, I haven't heard his thoughts, uh, but you know, we hope that he enjoyed it. And Mr. Lucas, if you're out there, uh, we hope he enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it. So that was a fun one. Cool. Yeah, That's he's always point. welcome to come to the office, hang out, <laughs> and give there us. We, <clears throat> we always yeah. welcome that. So his likeness is part of the Star Wars property. You guys can just pull that. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously without diving into details of kind of rights and whatnot, yeah, obviously, you know, we, we were able to do the figure. And so it was, again, due to the great partnership we have with Lucasfilm. Awesome. Yeah. And Tim, close us out. Okay, so you've partially answered this in a previous question. Thanks, thanks for that, Chris. Um, so basically, it's about the specialty wave and um, just a little bit of insight into the sort of criteria that you go through to picking those figures for the reissue. Yeah. And more specifically, it's about the Ahsoka. So was the Ahsoka chosen like a big part of that because it did well in the uh, back, the, what was it, the, uh, the, vault, the vault vote? Obviously the other figure won, but did that figure perform yeah. really well? Was it quite close? And that's why you chose to put that one back out. Yeah, she was she was in there before that point. Obviously, seeing the results of the the vote from the vault made us feel good about that selection. Uh, but again, kind of the the lens is always which characters will make the most sense for new fans and specifically international fans. You know, I mentioned kind of the the variety of things we go through to draw on that. Uh, but that figure, obviously, you know, popular character today from Clone Wars. Obviously, this isn't the Clone Wars season seven version, but season seven just concluded the Clone Wars, so all those things bubbled up to lead us to that selection. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you guys as well. We have to hop. We've got another one of these in a minute. Uh, but, you know, just a quick thanks again without diving into details. We love doing this. We know it's time out of your day and we really appreciate you taking the time. So, so thanks so much. We hope to do it again you. soon. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Good seeing you guys. Bye.